The Maker Made CNC. If you think it looks familiar to the Mazel CNC, that's because it is. It's the same product with a couple upgrades, rebranded under the new company Maker Made CNC, but also still holding on to the Mazel CNC name as well. In this video, I'll walk you through an overview of the build process, and I'll be making more detailed videos on each step of this build to be released soon after this one. So make sure not to miss them by subscribing and hitting the notification bell. To start off, I'd like to mention that the build plans provided on the MakerMade website are way more improved compared to the instructions with the original Maslow. Each step of the build has its own PDF that details the materials and tools needed for that part of the build, followed by detailed steps with illustrations to help along the way. So getting into the build, the first thing we are going to do is cut down all of the 2x4s for the frame. As mentioned before, when ordering the MakerMade CNC kit, you get everything you need for the build except for the lumber and some screws and nails. I estimate the additional cost of lumber and nails to be a little bit more than $100, and that's factoring in two 4x8 sheets, one for the base of the Maslow and one for the first cut. I found all the cuts and assembly of the frame to be pretty simple and easier to build than the original. It only took me a couple of hours to complete, but I'm not sure if that was due to the fact that I've done it before, so make sure that you take a look at the estimated time they have in each of the PDF plans to understand how long it might take you to complete it. A great part of their new design and improved plans also is that they removed a lot of the difficult angle measurements from the build itself by implementing some more common sense techniques, such as aligning two pieces of wood at one end, pivoting the other end of the top piece until it reaches the nether part of the frame, therefore you're completing the needed angle for the structure. I'm not sure if that made sense the way I described it, but once you actually do the build, you'll see what I'm talking about. Here you can see that you start off making the same first two A-frames for the side of the Maslow, and these are probably the most important parts to make sure you get the angles correct, and they help you out with instructions. After that, you work on a lot of the structure and supporting pieces of the Maslow, so the measurements end up being easier, and you can speed up a lot when assembling these parts. Another new part of this design is that there's no front bottom support for the plywood to actually rest on. So I actually had to pick up the plywood and screw it into the back base support. I'm not sure if I like this, I might end up putting my own 2x4 across the bottom, but I do understand why they did it. It allows you to have a larger cutting area since the sled holding the router won't butt up against the bottom piece. I never had a big issue with this before, so I might still add the bottom support or maybe not. We'll see along the way. I decided I wanted to add some personality to the frame, so I ended up painting the entire frame this light green color. I also found that with this new frame design, there's plenty of room on the back to store extra sheets of plywood. I'm not sure if this was a planned benefit of the frame, but it's a really great addition. After screwing in the main 4x8, I moved on to assembling the electronics. There's no major changes from the original Maslow here, including the fact that you have to make sure you plug the power cords into the right ports to ensure that the motors are getting power. Other than that, you just plug in the cable to the correct ports for the X and Y motors, and there's another port if you purchase the Z-axis motor, which I highly recommend. You plug that in, hook up the USB to the computer, and at the end you attach the circuit board assembly to the back of the Maslow. I recommend still encasing this control board because there's going to be a lot of sawdust flying and this can cause issues on the board and possibly short it out, so it's a simple fix by buying a box to put it. The main Maker Made CNC design has the motors mounted on the top support beam with the chains being tensioned towards the center of the beam, and these motors support the router from above.
I decided to use some MDF that I had laying around to make the temporary sled. When making this part, you don't have to worry too much about the size of the parts. The main factor to ensure for this and also for the final sled is that the router and chain support are as centered as you can make them. The new MakerMade team actually offers a pre-built sled for purchase, which I highly recommend, although I haven't purchased it myself. But not having to deal with the hassle of getting the cuts and mounting for the router correct is 100% worth the extra money in my opinion. However, if you want to save the cash, just do the best you can to make sure everything's centered. And after making the temporary sled, you'll actually calibrate the machine and you can cut out the final sled a couple of times. If you repeat the process and keep calibrating and cutting out the final sled with several iterations, you'll keep getting closer and closer to having a better sled because you're constantly improving on the measurements you made with the temporary sled. I find that even just using the first final sled iteration is good enough as long as you have a well calibrated machine. So just make sure again, try to make sure it's all centered from the start. In terms of software, not much has changed. You'll need to download the latest Arduino firmware and push this to your Arduino card. For those not familiar with this card, it's pretty much the interpreter between your computer models and the CNC motors to tell the machine how to move and cut. After ensuring that's up to date, you'll want to download the corresponding ground control version which is MakerMade software for taking your CAM files and actually running the cut. With the ground control software, you'll run through the calibration steps, take some measurements, and enter them into the software before cutting the final sled. There's some settings they instruct you to go in and change right at the beginning of the calibration. This is really easy. The manual walks you step by step throughout the entire thing. You're going to choose the triangular setting if you're working with the base kit provided by the MakerMade team. You'll go in and rotate the sprockets so that they're lined up correctly. You'll put the chain on the teeth of the sprocket and extend it until it reaches the other motor. And then you're going to pull the chains tight, which allows for the software to actually measure the distance between the two motors for you. After that, you just put the chains on the sprocket teeth again and extend it. And the software will actually extend the chains to the point where the router can be centered for the Maslow. You're gonna attach the nails to the middle and use the provided cords to pull the chains to keep them out of the way and help them retract as the router moves upwards. After all these steps, you just click move to center on the software and the Mazda will move the router to the center itself. Simple as that. You'll actually click for it to cut the test pattern at this point and the Mazda will make cuts at each of the corners of the plywood for you to measure and enter into the software where it will determine if the machine is calibrated or if it needs another test pattern cut as it makes changes and calibrates the machine. The nice thing is that the team has provided files that can be loaded on the free CAM site, makercam.com, and it has all the files ready for you to go to generate the tool paths and get to cutting. After loading this G-code into the ground control software, you're ready to make your first cut on the machine, and that's cutting the final sled. For my final sled, I actually cut it out of a sheet of melamine because this will allow for an extremely smooth surface on the side that's riding against the plywood backing, which will reduce a lot of friction and improve on the machine's efficiency. If you don't do this, you can also apply some wax to your sled to help remove resistance as well. After it's all complete, just transfer the parts from your temporary sled to the final sled, and you're all done. Just recalibrate the machine and you're good to go.
I hope you guys enjoyed the quick overview of building the Maker Made CNC. I'm really impressed with the machine so far and have several product videos coming out. But make sure you also keep an eye out for the detailed build videos coming out shortly if you're looking for more information on how to build the machine. Thanks as always for watching guys.